we are going to discuss some codal recommendations in uh, listed in case of a limit state method of design and uh, you can refer clause number 35 that section is totally devoted to limit state method in IS 456. Now some of the terms which we are going to use in limit state method so let us go through these terms. Now very first term which we are going to use and that is clearly mentioned in clause number 36.1 of IS456 that is the characteristic strength for material. As we have gone in detail regarding the characteristic strength of concrete, so here we are using two types of material and the concrete as well as steel. So what code is uh, mentioning or code is suggesting that can be referred in clause number 36.1 and uh, let us go through uh, just to revise characteristic strength for material now when we are talking about concrete so the characteristic strength of concrete is the strength of concrete below which not more than five percent of test result are expected to fall we have gone through this information in earlier lecture one or lecture two uh, if you still have any doubt you can refer previous lectures and uh, you can refer table number two now in IS 456 table number two which can be referred for different grade of concrete so that means according to the different grade of concrete what is the characteristic strength that is uh, clearly uh, mentioned in table number two Second material which we are going to use in our CC structure that is steel reinforcement. So the characteristics value shall be assumed here as the minimum yield stress or 0.2% of proof stress which is specified in relevant Indian standard specification. So you are uh, I think you are well aware regarding the concrete because all these information we have discussed in the preliminary lectures and uh, regarding the steel reinforcement uh, that already has been di discussed in strength of material. Now let us go through this table number 3 and uh, this uh, code is IS 1786-2008 version. So what table 3 give us information? regarding the mechanical property of high strength deformed bars and wires which we are going to use in case of design of RCC structure. Earlier there was a mild type of steel that is mild steel. Nowadays we are not using mild steel in case of RCC structures. <coughs> now table number 3 give us information <coughs> regarding the high strength deformed bars. And this is the grade of the steel which uh, from which the these uh, reinforcement bars are manufactured it may be fe415 415d 500 500d 550 550d and 600 now this 600 has been uh, included in the latest revision in this code now 0.2 percent of proof stress or yield stress this is the minimum value so mechanical strength that mean the yield strength which we will, will be taking if you are taking fe415 steel into design then you will be taking its yield strength minimum yield strength that is 415 mp so accordingly there are various uh, type of grades of steel and accordingly you can take the value of the yield strength of that steel for your design calculation purpose <coughs> another important uh, thing which you have to take into account that now the nominal size of the reinforcement bars which are available as per the code now these are the 4 mm 5 mm these are the diameter of the bars which you are going to uh, take into consideration while designing 8 mm 10 mm 12 mm Earlier there was 22 mm dia bar also, but now they have removed in the latest revision in the code. So I am not uh, going into detail what are the various revision. So these uh, nominal diameter bars are available in the market or they are manufactured as per the codal guidelines. 
so whenever you are going to design you can assume any type of or uh, you can take into consideration any type of uh, any diameter of the bars uh, from these values which are given here as per their requirement and as per their application which you will be later on uh, understand more effectively now another is uh, earlier we in the previous slide we have gone through the characteristics strength now we are focusing on characteristic loads so for this uh, information is available in clause number 36.2 so let us uh, briefly discuss this the characteristics load is defined as the load that has 95 percent probability of not being exceeded during the life of the structure so what we are considering here as per the definition that means characteristic load will be that load which has 95 percent probability that means there is the probability or possibility 95 percent of the possibility that it will not exceed during its life of the structure so that load you will be taken you will be taken into consideration in the calculation purpose that will be the term as a characteristics characteristic load now code is saying that in case of uh, or in the absence of any statistical data regarding load nominal value specified for dead load live load and wind load can be taken from these code is 875 part 1 part 2 and part 3 and the value of seismic load that means when you are going to consider earthquake load in case of design then you can refer is 1893 uh, 2002 so uh, till uh, till this we have discussed what are the characteristic strength and what is characteristic load now we are going to focus on design strength now now we have switched over from characteristic strength to design strength and characteristic load to design load and for this we can refer clause number 36.3 of is 456 the design strength of concrete or reinforcing steel that means design strength of the material is obtained by dividing the characteristic strength which we have already discussed by the appropriate partial safety factor earlier in the introduction part of limit state method you may remember that we have discussed here that instead of a working stress method where we were using factor of safety in limit state method we are using partial safety factor and this partial safety factor depends on various factors which later on we will be going to discuss so when you have to calculate you have to find out the design strength of any material then what you have to do you have to just divide the characteristic strength take the value of characteristic strength of that material and by appropriate partial safety factor by applying various consideration which we will discuss in the coming lectures now design strength and design load first of all partial safety factor in limit state method and uh, symbolically we will write it as gamma now partial first of all partial safety factor for material so uh, you may be able to understand that here we are going to take partial safety factor different for material as well as for load so first of all this is gamma m gamma is partial safety factor and m is used to indicate the material so gamma m is partial safety factor for material and for concrete as mentioned in india standard code we will be taking partial safety factor for concrete 1.5 that is gamma c is equal to 1.5 and partial safety factor for steel will be taken as 1.15 gamma s is 1.15 so you can see here we have taken partial safety factor for concrete somewhat higher than partial safety factor for steel so here why we are taking this you can refer any standard material and uh, this will be the first question for all of you 
so you can uh, just uh, get the information and write in the comment section you can refer clause number 36.4.2 of IS 456 for partial safety factor information regarding the material. Next, a partial safety factor for loads. Here we are using symbol gamma F. Here we were using symbol gamma M. Gamma M for material and gamma F for loads. <coughs> so gamma F, that is partial safety factor for load. It is the partial safety factor value for various combination of loads. Now here you can see here that we are using various type of combination of loads which we have discussed in the previous section for ultimate limit state and for serviceability limit state. So that means you have to take the partial safety factor for loads different for different type of combination of loads and different value for ultimate limit state as well as serviceability limit state and information is available in table number 18 and clause number 36.4.1 now this is the table number 18 which we have taken from IS456 so value of partial safety factor gamma f for various type of loads as we have discussed here that various type of load combination we are going to discuss these are the combination of loads so here as the combination of load change partial safety factor will change so various type of combination of loads dead load plus imposed load dead load plus wind load dead load plus imposed load plus wind load <coughs> now see here in note it is mentioned while considering earthquake effect substitute el for w so that means either take el or take wl now uh, in second column you can see that these are the value of partial safety factor for limit state of collapse which we have termed as ultimate limit state so dead load imposed load if you take into consideration first combination of loads that is dead load plus imposed load then you have to take this value that means for dead load partial safety factor gamma f is 1.5 and for imposed load it is also 1.5 and if we are taking into consideration wind load then partial safety factor we will take 1.0 now if you are going to discuss you know, take the value for limit state of serviceability so this partial safety factor for dead load which was 1.5 here you will take it as 1 for this type of combination and imposed load 1 and wind load it is not specified in the code so accordingly what are the various type of uh, combination of loads you are taking into consideration accordingly partial safety factor are mentioned now here another question which i want to ask to all of you so that you can just grill yourself and you can refer some standard material now here if i say this is uh, a type of combination of load and uh, this is b type of combination load and this is c type of combination of load you can see here we have taken different values for partial safety factor for data load in case of first combination, second combination and third combination. Why we have taken uh, very, uh, so much variation in the or in other uh, language we can say why the partial safety factor is varying from 1.5 to 0.9 or 1.5 to 1.2. So why it is decreasing when you have changed the combination of load type of combination of load so this question is uh, for all of uh, you who are going to watch this video and you must uh, uh, go through some literature or some standard book and uh, just write your in the comment section your reply and similarly for serviceability limit you can consider also and the third question which i want to ask you suppose we are taking this first combination of dead load plus imposed load in limit state of collapse we have taken partial safety factor 1.5 for dead load but in limit state of serviceability have taken we are taking the value 1 why this variation in the partial safety factor is taken into consideration that means why lesser partial safety factor is taken in case of limit state of serviceability and why higher value is taken in case of limit state of collapse 
So I am uh, expecting all of you go through the lecture carefully as well as the three or four questions which I have asked, you must reply uh, in the comment section of the YouTube video which uh, I am going to upload later on. Now limits to top, uh, limits to method of design here, some more information that is design strength and design load, how to do the calculation for it. So as already discussed, design strength of concrete or steel can be uh, calculated by, or can be evaluated by dividing characteristic strength by appropriate partial safety factor. So when you are going to calculate or evaluate the design strength of material, it may be concrete or it may be steel. So we will be going to use this formula, which is available in IS 456 in clause number 36.3 onward. So here, F is, this F is the characteristic strength of the material. And uh, gamma M, as we have discussed, partial safety factor, which is appropriate based on the material and the limit state being considered. Uh, I think you are uh, able to understand that what is the meaning of appropriate to the material and the limit state to be considered. It indicates that limit state, whether you are taking limit state of collapse into consideration or a limit state of serviceability. Accordingly, you have to pick the value gamma n. So what we are doing here, we are just uh, taking in the design calculation. That means if you are uh, here material is suppose it is concrete, then design calculation you are taking the design strength of that concrete is lesser than its actual characteristic strength. So we are applying partial safety factor here. In uh, earlier lecture, I have explained to you that what is the use of partial safety factor, why we are taking partial safety factor. So here question number four comes out to be, what is the role of partial safety factor in case of material we are taking? that means what is the significance or why we are taking partial safety factor of material into consideration so that uh, answer i am expecting from from all of you uh, those who are listening the lecture they should write in the comment section now design load here we have taken capital f for the symbolic purpose capital f is for the load and d for the design here f uh, which is a characteristic load is multiplied by partial safety factor appropriate to the nature of loading and the limit state which you are to going to be considering. So here we are multiplying the design load but in case of design strength we were dividing the uh, characteristic strength by partial safety factor. So that means we are taking strength at a lower side but design load as at a higher site so here that means we are again uh, assuring the you can say assuring the that the, there there should not be any type of a failure in the design that means when you are going to design a structure you are doing the calculation you are taking strength at lower end but load at higher end so possibility of failure 